Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure diorama review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane Batman Classic TV Series Adam West 1966 TV show, Wayne Manor Library. I got this from the McFarlane Toy Store, and it arrived today. This looks to be a really cool diorama. They've already done the Batcave, and then the Villain's Lair. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, DC... Batman Classic TV Series, ages 12 plus, Wayne Manor Library, figures not included. Here we have the Wayne Manor Library, Batman and Robin. Batman using the signature statue to expose the bat poles, both with their names attached. We have a fireplace here, lamp, a couple tables. Looks like some good detail. Looks like I can do a lot with this diorama. One side, unmasked Batman with the statue. Other side, just some more of the front wrapping around. In the back, you can see the diorama, different action features, and at the bottom, a bunch of credits, and there's a barcode, in case it helps anybody. I've also seen some people finding these at Target, so keep an eye out. Pretty cool set. So without further ado, let's open it up. And I did get three of these things, one of which to keep unopened in my complete unopened Batman related action figure collection. And of course, one to open as the Wayne Manor Library, and then another one to maybe make the Wayne Manor Library bigger and maybe use for some other action figures. Looks like I can get a lot of mileage out of this thing. Here are all three of the different 1966 dioramas they've made so far, still sealed in the package. All right, now that this thing out of the package, here are all the pieces laid out in front of you. We have a large back wall, fireplace, access to the bat cave via the bat poles. We've got a dresser, a desk, a chair, a globe, some lights, the red bat phone, the statue, and then a lamp. So, let's go ahead and get started and put this thing together. So let's start off with the largest piece, this back wall. Now, it's hinged in four different places. Got some wallpaper in the background there, a couple of pictures. Law school diploma. Now let's look at the fireplace. It's just some plastic. But you know what? It looks pretty good as a background piece. It does have a couple sort of pegs insert into the diorama piece back there. Now believe it or not, this is not the first officially licensed Wayne Manor fireplace that I have. This is a 7 inch scale DST or Diamond Select Toys Gotham fireplace. Funny thing is, I have two of these fireplaces because I got two of these Wayne Manor playsets. And then I also have two of the ones from Diamond Select. So I went ahead and added in the fireplace, this diorama. Clips in to some holes on this back piece right over there. And I plan to be building the diorama just like it's intended on the box. Now to add in the bat poles. In the back, it says access to the bat cave via bat pole. One pole is named Dick, one named Bruce. Now my only bit of feedback here. It really should have come with some sort of bookshelf to put in front of this thing. A little disappointed with how it's turned out this way. Just a small plastic bookshelf to put in front of that thing would make a big difference. It should be exposed when Bruce and Dick are in there in civilian attire. And it looks like I spoke too soon. This bat pole piece actually securely attaches to the rest of the diorama. And on the back, we do have a sliding bookshelf to totally cover that up. This diorama is everything I hoped it would be. It's hitting all the right notes. Next, let's attach this little lamp piece to the back wall there. Now to add in some of the other pieces, we'll start off with the desk and the chair. Then we'll add in the globe on the right hand side. Now for the dresser and the lamp in the back. And finally, the statue and the bat phone on the desk there. Now this diorama is fully assembled, and I'll tell you, it looks fantastic. For quite a basic diorama, they pulled it off nicely. And since we took a look at the complete Wayne Manor Library, here's a look at the completed Villain Slayer, and a look at the completed Batcave. This thing was way underscaled for the figures. Luckily, the Villain Slayer and Wayne Manor are not that way. And just a couple more things about the accessories. The lamp and chair here, really just not feeling the green they used. I get what they were going for, but it just looks too fake and plasticky, toyetic with this green. Maybe it's too bright, I don't know. It doesn't really capture the material that they're going for. This globe thing, it has no action feature, doesn't spin. Looks okay. And then the statue and the bat phone. 
Now the statue, it is actually articulated. The head go back, exposing the button to open the bat poles. But the phone here, it doesn't come apart. You can't pick up the receiver. Now that is just downright pathetic and lazy. They could have easily given us a removable earpiece. And here are those pieces next to their Mattel counterparts. The Mattel statue, smaller, also articulated. Then the Mattel phone is larger and does have the removable piece here, so it's far superior to McFarland's. And here's a look at both of the Wayne Manor library sets put together to make a larger diorama. This actually looks really cool and works good if you ask me. Now let's check out the measurements of this thing. So the back wall there, from one side to the other, about 23 and a half inches wide. Of course, if you have the fireplace, about 26 inches wide. If you look at how tall it is, about 10 and a half inches tall, maybe close to 11. And as far as how deep it is, I mean, it's like less than an inch deep, but you gotta add in the desk and stuff. So you're gonna have probably got six inches like that. So now let's check out the action features. So first of all, the back wall here, it's hinged in four different places. So you can have it completely straight, a little bit wider. And you can also curl it in more like a room. And of course, probably the most notable action feature is gonna be the bat poles here. So you've got this bookshelf here on the back. There's a little tab where you can slide to the side. Bam, open it up, expose the bat poles, burst and dick to the bat cave. And that's really it as far as the action features go. Of course, you have the desk and chair that your figures can sit into. Now let's put some guys into this thing. So I have this Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson and civilian attire customs that I made. Bruce Wayne came out fantastic, but Dick Grayson here looks like a little midget. I did not pick the right body, although I initially thought it would work. Well, if I get him sitting down, it'll probably work out pretty good. Put them both sitting at the desk, and it doesn't look too bad. Although Dick Grayson still looks hideous. He has no neck, and just the head is too big for that body. Shame on me for thinking it would work. I'll have to find a better body eventually for this guy. Add in Mattel's DC Multiverse, Alan Napier, Alfred. And you've got Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson's civilian tire with Alfred feeding them refreshments. Just like in the TV show. I think it works out fantastic. A closer look at the three of them in the Wayne Manor Library. Of course, Bruce Wayne's holding the phone. So that means it's the Mattel version where the receiver actually comes up. Shame on McFarlane. But, you know, it doesn't mess up this awesome diorama. Which is turning out better than we would have hoped. And I thought it was going to be pretty good. And as much as they need to make a standard suited Alfred in this line, they really need to make Aunt Harriet too. Oh, that would be just awesome. She's one of my biggest hopes for this line. Another 1966 Batman TV show villain that I thought would be amazing in this diorama is Bookworm. Of course, he's got books scattered all over the place. And a library of all places. Very appropriate for Bookworm. Here's Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. Alfred finally distracted Aunt Harriet. They're getting ready to go down to the Batcave and suit up. Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson to the Batcave! And as always, in that corny fashion on the show, they would always come down to the bottom of the bat poles all suited up. Made absolutely no sense, but was kind of cool in some way. Now let's check it out with some different various action figures. Now one cool thing about this diorama, it's very tall. The McFarland 1966 line is not that big. It's a six inch scale line, but a lot of the figures are five and three quarter inches. My point is they're pretty small, but this thing is able to accommodate six inch figures, seven inch figures, hell, eight inch figures fit in here just fine. The wall is tall, it's large. This diorama is fantastic. Here it is with some Mattel figures. We have a Mattel Alan Napier Alfred and a Mattel Clark Kent with a McFarland Adam West head on there. And then a Mattel Hector Hammond with a McFarland Dick Grayson head on there. Yes, he looks like a midget. I will have to fix that eventually, but for now, this is my Bruce Wayne, Dick Grayson, and Alfred combo. And with this diorama, it looks pretty freaking cool. Here's a McFarlane traditional Batman and Robin in this diorama. And actually, the unmasked versions would be a little bit more appropriate. And then, the Mattel 1966 Batman, Batgirl, and Robin. And here are all the McFarlane Batman 1966 villains in front of this diorama. Then, Mattel's 1966 villains. Now let's check it out. Next to some action figures from different various companies. 
so we can see how it fits in both scale and style wise in case you know which lines will work with this thing and that is the greatest thing about this diorama it's intended for a pretty small scale of figures but it is way bigger than it needs to be and it'll work with anything in my collection it has surpassed my expectations as far as that goes I'm going to start my comparisons with some of these smaller action figure lines I collect and work my larger here it is with some Jazzwares Fortnite figures in front of the diorama and here's some SH figure arts in this playset then some Hasbro Marvel Legends and here's some Mayfix figures in front of the Wayne Library then some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures in front of this thing and here's some Mezco 112 collective figures in front of the diorama and now some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers then some Mattel wrestling figures in front of this diorama and here's some NECA figures in front of this playset notice a 7 inch NECA Adam West figure fits just fine in front of this thing then with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures in front of this thing and here's some McFarland toys in front of this diorama then some DST or Diamond Select toys in front of this playset and finally some Jack specific figures in front of this diorama the whole point of that exercise was to show you that anything from your smaller 6 inch scale figures to your larger 7 inch and hell even 8 inch figures would fit in just fine in front of this thing this diorama is fantastic it's just hitting all the right notes for me it's a regular real world type of diorama it could be all purpose it can just be a general house or mansion it can be the Wayne Manor it could be for Bookworm it could be a library for Buffy the Vampire Slayer it could just be a regular background house or building really really enjoying this thing yeah it looks a little bit cartoony but as a whole I'm very very pleased it's a basic one side diorama but the accessories, the articulation, the wallpaper, the books, like I said, it just hits all the right marks for me. If I were to rate this thing, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. And I expected to like this thing, but I'm liking it way more than I expected. And that's a really awesome thing to say. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say with the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure diorama and action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.